Hey guys, it's Mia here, and welcome back once again to another bookish video. Now, I know I've done a lot of these lately, but I've been reading a lot lately, and you guys already saw that I was reading this, but now is the full review of the book. This is The Lost Hero by Rick Riordan, and it is the Heroes of Olympus series. Now, this one has three different perspectives being Leo, Piper, and Jason. And my favorite perspective of the three of them is Jason's because we start out, he wakes up with zero memory. He doesn't know where he is. He doesn't know who the people around him are, even though they seem to know him. He was just kind of plopped into this other world that wasn't his and he felt wrong being in it because he knew it wasn't his world. Now, I love the mystery of it because I have read the first series that Rick Riordan made, the, um, I know the name, I literally just blanked on the name, the Lightning Thief series, there it is. I read that one and Honestly, I think so far that I like this one a lot better, and mainly I just like the mystery of who Jason is and how he re reforms his relationship with Leo and Piper. Because there's supposed to be boyfriend and girlfriend in his memories, but he's like, something feels wrong here, I don't even know you, I doubt we're boyfriend and girlfriend. And this is a pretty long book. It's like 557 pages, but it doesn't feel that long at all because it's just so enjoyable to not only be as confused as Jason is, but also see his adventure and how he grows and tries to get his memory back through the book. My second favorite was uh, actually Leo's. I didn't care for Piper all that much. She's a, this is a little bit of a spoiler, but not that big of one. She's a daughter of Aphrodite? Aphrodite, yeah, the goddess of beauty. And hers was just the least favorite storyline to me. She does a lot of complaining about the fact that her dad is a movie star. Like, oh, I don't want the attention of him being a movie star. Like, what other kids can get to say, oh, my dad's a famous movie star, but that's like a big letdown in her life. She doesn't like being the daughter of a movie star. So that's my least favorite storyline because, I don't know, she spends a lot of time like, oh, Jason doesn't really know me. Does he really love me? Oh, don't look at that poster. It's my dad shirtless. It's I don't like having a movie star dad. And why doesn't he take more Indian roles? And that's all she does throughout the whole book is like worry about Jason not loving her and her dad being a movie star. And I just didn't care for that very much. I mean, she does have growth throughout the book where she does become stronger and she stands up to the big bully in her cabin but that's about it it's not the most enjoyable one in the book and then Leo's was really good too in figuring out um, how he has a rare power that nobody else has in his cabin and that caused him to be chosen to go on this quest, which obviously from the cover you can tell they're the three that go on the quest. So he gets chosen and the dragon comes into play. That's how they get from point A to point B because they're not supposed to go on land because the big earth, earth itself is the big bad guy in this. So they have to travel, air travel to get around. So yeah. My least favorite storyline was Piper's, and that's just because she did a lot of complaining. So, Leo's was really good in the fact that he's not only dealing with the fact that he's got 
rare powers that no one else normally has, so everyone's kind of like both afraid of him and kind of awed of him. And he also has to deal with something that happened in his past that he is really guilty about because even though he was defending himself, he ended up really hurting someone. So he has to deal with that grief and for a while it takes him a little bit to use his power over fire to be able to help more with the quest because he's afraid that if he unleashes that power again, he'll hurt people that he didn't mean to in a bad way. So, those are the two most enjoyable storylines to me, and it all comes together really nicely. And I feel like even though there are three different perspectives in this, it was really well balanced, and I didn't have a problem like, okay, who am I in the perspective of now? What is their motivation? What are their powers? What's their attitudes? I didn't feel like it took me that much work to be able to get back in the mindset of the character that was being talked about in that chapter. Unlike with Warstorm, where it was like six different perspectives and it just slogged on for me. I could not finish it. There was one perspective, I don't even remember her name, and that's how much I didn't care. But this one just keeps it so balanced, and it's really enjoyable even with the perspective switches. And it wasn't hard to follow at all. I'm currently reading the second one, The Son of Neptune. Um, I'll go over that one in a review whenever I get it done. I'm kind of... I'm not in a reading slump, but it's just taking me longer to read because I'm not as in enjoying it as much as I am this one, but I'll get it done. So yeah, that's my thoughts on The Lost Hero. I think on my Goodreads I gave it a 5 out of 5 because it was really enjoyable and really well balanced, so that's good. And this was the second book to my 10 goal for the year. I could probably do more than 10, but I wanted to keep it um, small for my first challenge. So I went with 10. So this is my second book to my reading goal. I'm working on the third. So as always, if you guys enjoyed, be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell down below to stay up to date on future videos. Hope to see you next time. Bye, guys.